Good morning. Welcome back to another video. Um, I'm wearing my Bahu hoodie today. It's the last run of the WTRL racing series. Um, I'm looking forward to finishing it. It's been a long eight weeks, but it certainly has helped my fitness, I think, uh, or at least fast track me back to where I was. Um, this hoodie uh, was given to me when we did the British e-racing national championships in London. Do you see it? It's cool, right? <laughs> so I'm in here this morning because the washing machine is on and the noise is going to drive me mad. So, um, a couple of things. We have, we took a complete day off yesterday after the whole route because, yeah, I was, I was in the mood too after doing that. Um, I was contacted by somebody after seeing the videos there's an opportunity there that's presented itself. So who says that Zwift racing, you know, doesn't doesn't help real world racing? I saw a little glimpse of something on Speedplay's Instagram, which is pretty cool. Um, does anyone think? I know Charlie uses. Can you see that? Charlie uses Speedplay pedals. She has done for like five years. She swears by them because of the adjustment, you know, uh, with the cleats, like it's unlimited adjustment. Uh, I've used like Speedplay, I've used Look, I've used Shimano, um, and uh, yeah, I, I I quite like Speedplay, but I I as soon as the team that I was on, as soon as I we stopped riding them, I didn't go back to them. So I probably would go back to them, um, but Speedplay may be coming out with a power meter. Oh yeah, today we've got a training session. <laughs> so following on from like the last couple of days of the hot route and all the climbing that we did. I'm going to continue that and do a bunch of sweet spot, longer sweet spot blocks today. Uh, then we've got to gear up for this weekend because this weekend we've got the, uh, the RGT stage race, which won't be on Zwift, obviously. Uh, it's the Tour of Wales, technically. Um, it's a team time trial, um, which I'll live stream it all as well. Uh, we've got eight, seven or eight, six, eight, I don't know, riders from the back pedal squad racing. Um, so we'll all be in the same race. And they're pretty sporting courses. So they're not like ridiculously hilly. Some are completely flat. Um, we've been having a little bit of discussion in the Discord, in the Discord server, which if you haven't already joined, I think there's a link down below in the description somewhere. Um, we were just like discussing tactics and what we're going to do on each stage, each stage. And then the final stage finishes up the tumble. It actually climbs it twice, so um, might be an opportunity for me to test um, some kind of medium turn power. So anyway, let's do today's session. Ah, speaking of which, I've just I've just remembered there's a couple of other things. So I'm on the lookout for some new cycling shoes. So I bought these secondhand. These are the Giro Empires. They're in black and this funky kind of fluoro color. I've never been a fan, to be honest. Um, I, w I was always told to never wear black cycling shoes, like never. It's a, it's a, it's a sin of the cycling world. Um, so I'm looking for some white shoes that will mainly be like my best shoes. You know, I won't wear them every day. I've had a couple of uh, like big deep dives on the interwebs to try and see if there's anything similar to the Shiro's that fit similar. These have been phenomenal. Uh, I have to say, like, they're lace-ups. I would prefer a boa dial or boa and laces. They're super light. They're, like, I think 215, 220 grams for one shoe. So the pair are quite light. People have been sending me, like, messages about the new Shimano's. Um, obviously, S-Works, you know, Specialized. They do, like, a good range. I've tried Mavic shoes, Specialized shoes, Physique shoes, Zero shoes. Specialized I got on with, zero I get on with. Um, so if you have any shoes, or if you think that if I'm likely to get on with these, I'll get on with another pair uh, as an example, then let me know. Now obviously we all have you know different feet. I have been using, up until last year, custom insoles, and then I stopped using them. So I'm gonna be on the lookout for custom insoles as well.
Good luck. Good morning. We've tried. Alright, so we're back with a little voiceover. We haven't done these in ages actually, and um, I really enjoy doing them. Um, so, because I felt like today's ride was so short, um, I just wanted to get out, um, do the intervals, and uh, just strap the GoPro to the chest mount so I could do this afterwards rather than uh, trying to do it well, elsewhere during the route. The difficult thing is when you're doing intervals outside is you often just want to get in the headspace of doing them rather than, you know, trying to talk to a camera at the same time. So um, I'm heading through Lacha here, which is kind of this side of um, of the coastal path where it starts to, to get to Pembrey, which is eventually where I ended up. Uh, it was a very simple route. A very flat route as well so um, this is like a little montage of it so it's not quite stitched together as as accurately as if you were to ride it yourself but um, the reason why I run for a flat route rather than a hilly route is because I always start with flat routes um, they usually make me feel uh, better for one because I'm, I'm going faster um, but there's something about the crossover between you know, riding indoors and constantly having that pressure on the pedals indoors, uh, you know, on Zwift or whatever you ride, and then going outside, and it's almost exactly the same when you're riding on a flat road. You've got to constantly um, pedal and monitor the slight changes in gradient, because even though I haven't got power on the screen here, this is ever so slightly downhill. It's like minus one, minus two percent, and when the speed starts to run away from you, you have to keep you know, you have to keep pedaling, you have to keep the pressure on. So I'm, you know, dumping it down a couple of gears just to keep um, to keep that pressure there. The other thing as well is I don't want to be climbing like now. These efforts are long as well. I'll get into this in a second. But um, these, like, if I was climbing now, I wouldn't be going as fast as if I was, like, in peak, peak shape then. Um so it's, it comes down to morale as well, a little bit. Um, so um, I, I I make an effort to try and be aerodynamic as well. So this is what riding on the flat allows me to do. This is our 10-mile time trial course, a local one to us down the Pembrey Flats. And I'm tucked down right now at the minute. Well, not completely tucked down, but I'm just concentrating on keeping my elbows in. Um, I, I change between like the tops or the hoods where I am now, rather, and um, the the drops, the hooks. Um, I, I tend to not ride in the drops a lot, like if anything, really. O only when I descend. That's a golden rule. Always descend on the drops. Um, but I, I try to give myself like some time there, just to just to make sure I remember how to ride in the drops. To be honest. Uh, and here we are, uh, stopped at uh, some temporary traffic lights now. I I hate this, like, and this is kind of why a lot of people stay indoors and do their training. But you know, it's it's a problem that I often see, like, with people you know, on a group ride or whatever it may be. They stop at the lights there, and they're like, "I was literally thirty seconds away from ending this fifteen-minute sweet spot interval," and the temptation is as soon as you pull away to just spike the power. To 400 just to get away and up to speed but you'd be amazed at how quick you get up to speed anyway if you just kind of you know set off and settle straight back to that number that you were at before the traffic lights for example um and, and i always tell people you know don't worry about the number on the screen worry about you know actually sticking to the number like if your average power is going to drop over that 15 minute lap just because you've had to freewheel for 10 seconds before the the traffic lights or whatever like don't worry about it um you know just spend time at the number you're supposed to ride at don't worry about the average of the whole effort um so now i'm churning up trim tower and hill the alternative way so through the houses um, I don't know if a lot of people know about this, even the locals probably don't know, well, if you're local to Trimsaran, you'll know about it, obviously, uh, although you probably avoid it, um, but it avoids the main road, 
which is where um, we did an Everest last year. Speaking of which, where uh, we're doing one next weekend. Uh, I'll tell you more about that later. But um, I I was coming to the end of my third and final 15 minute sweet spot effort. Uh, I averaged 320 watts, give or take, you know, plus or minus five watts for these three efforts with two and a half minutes of recovery in between. Um, felt decent, felt really decent. Uh, this whole session was only 90 minutes, so half of the session was made up uh, riding at, uh, you know, in this intensity. Um, so, yeah, felt great. Heart rate average, I think, 155 um, for for the 15-minute segment, and average power is 320 watts at 155 beats a minute, which is like 5.3, 5.2, 5 5.3 watts per kilo. So it was... Uh, it was good, you know, um, and then I crested the top, and uh, I thought I'd have some fun down the descent back into uh, Pembrey. This is it here. Uh, if you're a little bit, if you don't like dodgy descents, look away now. Uh, <laughs> but no, it's it's perfectly fine, this one, especially on a dry day, it's perfectly fine. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this uh, little breakdown. Um, I don't often ride sweet spot, I have to admit, very often because it's quite hard on my head, to be honest. Like, I find it quite difficult to maintain. It's never hard, but it's never easy. It's like that in between intensity that you never quite like get comfortable with, you know. No matter, like, with threshold work, you can be like, yeah, I can keep going, like, I can, I can grip my teeth through this, and I just got to go hard. Same with, you know, you know, higher power level stuff. You can just like grit your teeth and just nail it for whatever duration you're trying to go as hard you can for. The downside is, of course, that like sweet spot is like that kind of middle ground area where it hurts a little bit. That doesn't hurt like massively, but still, it's uh, it serves its purpose. And you you know my stance on that. Like every every like every training zone, training level, it all has its purpose. Um, so today's purpose was this. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.